Welcome to Old Buzzard Videos. I'm Dan Plute, the Old Buzzard, and this is the second video in the Avenza Maps series. Uh, the first uh, video I produced was just basic map uh, downloading and, and use. Now, this video is going to cover layers. Layers were perhaps one of the uh, more complex things to understand. Uh, I may have made too big of a deal out of it. I'm, I'm supposed to be an IT guy. In fact, I had a master's rating in uh, a specialty area of IT. Uh, so perhaps I made too big, de big of a deal out of layers, but uh, once I understood them, then they became a very powerful tool and really made uh, Venza Maps a pleasure to use, not just for the mapping features, uh, in fact, the maps portion of it kind of stands alone, but the layers portion of Avenza, it's where you store your tracks and, and routes and pins and, and those sort of things. But understanding what layers are and how to manipulate them, how to copy them, how to move them back and forth, how to make layers visible and not visible, uh, those things, I think, scare maybe some people because they don't understand the basic concept of layers. I'm going to take a uh, kind of a novel approach to showing you what layers are and how to manipulate them. I will do my uh, novel approach first, and hopefully you'll enjoy it. It's kind of cute, I think. Uh, and then we'll go into screen recording uh, some actual layer manipulations and whatnot. So in any case, I hope you enjoy this video, and I hope a lot of folks find it helpful. Uh, it's going to be different than the other tutorials that you find out there, I promise you that. So uh, we'll see you in the next cut. Bye-bye. Okay, here we go. Uh, a lot of people like to learn off of a physical thing as opposed to learning uh, on a virtual thing like a, a map on a computer or, you know, this, this esoteric thing called layers. Uh, so I think my novel approach is going to be to try and demonstrate to you as much as I can on physical things such as this is a physical map we're looking at. It is the motor vehicle use map for the Umatilla National Forest. It's map number 21, if anybody cares. Uh, but it's the actual map. It's the physical device. Now, this phys ph physical map, you know, it has a lot of information on it, like the name of the map, uh, you know, all kinds of, of defining information you know, about the trails and seasonal closures and all that. Uh, there's nothing we can do to manipulate those uh, objects or, or those map features. Uh, one thing I want to say right up front is that I will probably use the word object a lot more than I use the word feature, but for purposes of what we're doing, they mean the same thing. In the IT world I'm used to, I'm used to objects, uh, but Avenza calls them features, per perhaps to keep it from sounding so much computerized. But again, there's the map. Now, any time that you create a feature or an object, uh, such as when you drop a pin on a map, if you have not purposefully created a layer and named the layer, it will just be named layer. So it's possible you can end up with a hundred things uh, named layer or a hundred layers named layer if you don't name. So I'm going to harp on that a lot. As soon as you create something, you really ought to put a name on it or at least do it at the end of the day while your memory is still fresh. But let me demonstrate to you what a layer is. A layer is, here's the analogy or analogous to it, uh, this is a clear plastic sheet that we'll put over the, the map. It's a layer over the map. 
Now, every time you, you make a layer, uh, it's going to have a place to edit its attributes. Now, the attributes, let's see, where shall I put the attributes? The attributes are, are going to be attached to that layer. So every time you create a layer, whether by dropping a pin uh, or by purposefully creating a layer, and we'll show you how, how to do both of those things, uh, every time you create a layer, that layer is going to have attributes itself. The, the attributes for layers will be a title that you must give it, a way to lock the layer to make sure that that everything that comes after it is put on that layer. You will have a default icon, you will have default line styles, and it will be linked to maps. Uh, so those are all things that you can change, and that title is an absolute must. So every layer is going to have all these attributes uh, associated with it, and it's up to you to edit them to keep things organized and straight. Organization I am going to harp on because it's it was my weak spot when I started. I I probably had 50 tracks and and oh, you know a couple hundred pins before I went. Uh oh, they're all just labeled track. I don't know where these things go. Uh, and it took a lot of deducing in order to figure out how to get all that organized. I'm trying to save you from that. Anyway, so that is a, a layer, uh, a layer's attributes or a layer's features, I guess. So that that's one layer. Now, you can put layers on top of layers. So you may make that a layer of pins. Okay, so the uh, red now is actually a piece of yarn. I'll give my trade secrets away there, but the red uh, is exactly what a track will look like, or a lines that you draw and lay, or uh, routes. Uh, all those objects, lines, routes, uh, and tracks you will be able to manipulate their uh, attributes. So these again, this would be called a map feature. I'm, I'm going to refer to that as my track. That's a track I've recorded. That track will have uh, a number of attributes. And those attributes will be again a title. That's very important. Uh, whether it's a track or a uh, line or a route, uh, you know, it, another map feature could be a, a photo and then you can have uh, a greater description other than just the title. But again, the title is just absolutely important or you won't be able to uh, figure out what the heck that, that track was if you get it uh, disassociated from a map. In fact, that map feature, let's see, yeah, that map feature is, of course, a part of the layer, and that layer was linked to maps. So have, having it linked to the correct maps, so they won't work at all if you don't have it linked to a map. Uh, but in any case, all these things are important, and, you know, the title obviously is edit editable, uh, it'll self-identify itself as to whether it's a track or a line or a route. And then uh, photos, uh, you can again take a photo, it would show you the photos here when we get to the real uh, screen recording of these things. It would show you the photos that you took along the way. And it's up to you whether you want to make a longer description. So, you do have uh, a track there. But you can put layers on top of layers. So let's add another layer. And I'm going to tell you why we're going to do this. In fact, I like to have three layers for a lot of mine. Uh, but I think I told you that I like to use pins 
for route planning, and I think I described why fairly well. Uh, I think Avenza is going to listen to this. I've talked to him and showed him the first one. I, I think they thought it was kind of cute and a novel approach to try and teach Avenza. They're really nice people there. If, if you ever call them and talk to them or write them, every one of them has been extraordinarily friendly, extraordinarily helpful. They actually answer the phone. Uh, and you're supposed to be a subscriber before you use any of those services, and I am. I pay them the $30 a year, I believe it is, so that I can do as many imported maps as I want. Uh, but in any case, uh, so we just laid down another layer. It, it will have those same editable uh, attributes that you can title and you can lock lock it to be a current layer. Uh, you can have uh, default icons for that layer, the whole thing just like we told you. But I'm going to use this layer to drop pins because that's what I use for my route planning. I come from, let's see, where do I come in on this place? That's why I picked it. I come in from here. Yeah, I was going to put a piece of cardboard under this uh, so I could actually push the pins, but I want to get this thing produced. So I start dropping pins on my route. I want to be able to get uh, all the way down here to the teal campground. So while I'm at home, come on, let's stay there. Ha! Huh. While I'm at home, this thing is not going to work for me. While I'm at home, I will start dropping these pins. And like I say, I drop them at every corner and I drop enough of them that I always have the pins visible on the map. So now we have two, two layers visible. They both have titles. They're, they both have some default attributes and those sort of things. And that's two layers. What, what I probably didn't mention in the beginning, and you can take this as far as you want or, or not, but the way I like to organize things is I'll make a layer that is a national forest. Uh, and then under that layer, I'll show you this a little later too, under that layer I will uh, make a a layer that is just for pins. Also under the the national forest layer, in this case I have a layer called the uh, Umatilla. Might have named it Pomeroy because I write out of the Pomeroy Ranger District. In any case, uh, under that main layer I will also have a layer called lines. And the reason that I do that is that if you pin these things a hundred times, if you get a hundred different, uh, hundred different routes or tracks on it all at once, it gets way too busy and way too confusing. So they have a feature that's called visibility that you can toggle on and off. You can toggle off visibility for entire layers. So you can make all the pins disappear, you can make all the lines disappear, uh, or you can make everything disappear. But that's a really handy tool, and I, I want you to think about your own organization. There's nothing in the world that says mine is the best way to do anything. Uh, but mine's, you know, I've tried different ways, and thank goodness they do have ways to cut and paste or... Uh, in their parlance, it's, it's just to move. So you, you can move pins from one layer to another. You can, you can move a whole layer to, to another layer. Uh, there's, there's a lot of power in the editing features they've given us. But you, you, can, you can get the idea now that, well, I, I'm not interested in the pins anymore. So we can delete, or not delete, we can make those pins invisible just by turning this top layer off. And, and now all the pins are gone. You're just left with uh, whatever route or, or track you laid. 
and we can make the track invisible. So again, when a map gets real busy because you've been up there a hundred times and you only want to see the, the track you're laying right now and the pins that, that you have laid previously as, as a route, you can see how it's real important to have only those two things showing even though you might have a hundred different objects and, and 15 different layers on that map. So that's, that's kind of the, I think, the, the physical demonstration of how layers work. Uh, and organization, again, is just paramount, thinking about how you're going to do your layers on an appropriate time for a phone call, because that's all uh, for this part of the demonstration. Bye-bye. Okay, we're all done with the physical examples of what layers and objects are. We'll move now into uh, a little more of an explanation of the virtual layer and virtual pins and, and different objects. What we're looking at right now is kind of a list of uh, three organizational possibilities and three real organizational examples. So let's start with the organizational possibilities. You can see for layer one, if you read to the right, uh, under layer one, we can just have features. You, you can have a layer and all that layer will have in it will be pins or tracks or lines or photos or any combination of all those things all under one layer. Now that's not real good organization uh, for a number of reasons because you won't be able to tell what area you're in, what day you were writing, uh, you know, what special thing you were doing. So now if we look at layer two, we've put a second layer under uh, the first layer. We'll call that layer 2A. And then under layer 2A, we can put features. So really all we've done here is put a layer under a layer and then added features to the second layer. And uh, you can do that. That'll work, but it doesn't get you much. The way I really like to do it is with uh, the example of layer three. Uh, and you can have all these examples on your, your tablet or your phone at one time if you want. Uh, but all of mine are patterned, I believe, after layer 3, or at least that was my intent. Layer 3, I've created a layer 3A, a layer 3B, and a layer 3C. And all of those layers, A, B, and C, have features. So if we look down below now where we actually look at the organizational examples, uh... The, the Boise example is the same as layer one up on top, where all I've got in the Boise layer is pins for planning. That's all I've got. And sometimes I'll start out that way. I haven't ridden in a Boise National Forest yet, but I may, may uh, attach that Boise layer to the Boise maps or a Boise collection, and I'll just start pinning out places to go. And then I may add and edit some layers later. Uh, example two here, uh, when we go down, you know, it's the equivalent of layer two up above. I'm in the Nez Perce forest and I wanted a special layer just for my Dixie ride. And I have one track in it that I've named track to Buffalo Hump. Now, of course, I could have maybe 50 different tracks in that uh, example if I want. It could be the Nez Perce Forest, uh, the Dixie Layer, and a number of tracks un under that layer. Now, the third example uh, is the way uh, I like to lay everything out myself. For instance, layer 3 up on top is the same as the Umatilla layer on bottom. Umatilla, I have 
broken up into the different rides I go on up there. One time Ed took me up and he showed me showed me a loop that, that I wanted to keep track of, so I, I laid a track for it. And when I got home, I created a layer, or maybe I did it before, I don't remember, but I created a layer named Ed's Ridge Loop. And then the track, I also named Ed's Ridge Track. Now I can retrace my steps to where Ed showed me. But in that same Umatilla layer, there's one more layer that was John's plan for Troy. So that's a fictitious character that laid out a whole bunch of pins on a map and was going to show me the route down to Troy. He didn't have a track to show me, but he laid out a route with a bunch of pins so that's its own layer, John's plan for Troy. And under John's plan for Troy, I've labeled uh, his pins, John's Troy pins. And, and actually, I probably shouldn't have said that. I should have just, just left it at pins because when you get to the individual pins, uh, you know that they are John's plans for Troy. You kind of see how that works? I didn't really even need to say John's Troy pins there because that's not a layer. There was probably 30 pins and I would just let them all say pin because the layer they're in tells me what they are for. I have a third layer under Umatilla called Smoothing Iron Wiki Up and Anatone. Well, actually not Anatone. Uh, I'm sorry, not and anatone. It's it's a route. I've I've done this by, uh, you know, Ed's Ridge Loop was was a track that Ed Ed showed me. John's plan was a bunch of pins that John sent me, and then this last one was actually a route. I, sometimes I name my layers for routes, and the route was we go up to the smoothing iron, we head for Wiki up. And from Wiki up, we head to Anatone. Uh, so inside of that layer, I will have the tracks and pins to Anatone. So I th I'm hoping all that makes sense. Uh, but these are some organizational possibilities and organizational examples. Uh, the third one is my favorite, the Umatilla example. Uh, I think you can probably get an idea of how I do it. Again, my methods are not necessarily the best. You can certainly play with your own, but knowing how the layers work and having layers under layers, that's an important thing to understand when you do plan your own organization. So we'll move on to some real stuff now. Okay, here we go. We're going to get to uh, layers in just a moment, but let's open Avenza Maps. I want to make sure everything's set up and ready to go. Uh, it opens right into Maps, and we've talked about organization a lot in the last video, and here's an example where if we don't get control of it here real soon, uh, we're going to have t you know, a way too many maps uh, in the root directory or the root folder uh, and we don't want that to happen so let's do just a little quick maintenance here to begin with uh, I always like to have a folder called temp for those maps that I don't want to throw away but I don't want cluttering the screen up so the first thing I want to do is let's make a folder called temp and uh, that will be the plus sign down on the bottom right. Add a folder, which is the top selection. The folder we're going to call T-E-M-P, temp. And there you see a folder called temp. So let's make one more folder. I like to, to keep all of my maps uh, in collections and if a collection allows you to, to 
have one map be relatable to another in other words if you open a if you have a map that's in a collection open uh, you can swipe your finger across the screen it will automatically move from one map to another if you just drive off of one map and get on to another uh, it will automatically move too that doesn't work out too well with MVUMs because it, because MVUMs and many maps have way too big of a margin and you got to drive all the way across that blank margin before it'll pop over to the next map uh, in, in any case, uh, in order to have decent organization, I like to keep all of my maps in folders for specific forests. We're actually in the Umatilla National Forest here. Uh, so let's make a folder called Umatilla. Or it's the Pomeroy Ranger District, but add a collection the second button down and yeah let's name it umatilla so u m a t i l l a umatilla now that's a collection again uh well you can tell on the bottom uh here the um umatilla folder has the symbols inside of it that tells you that all the maps that are inside will have a relationship to each other uh, for a couple of different reasons. It's a real good thing to use uh, collections. Temp does not have that symbol in it, so the maps won't have any relationship to each other. I want to declutter my screen, so let's put a couple of things in temp. In fact, uh, the getting started map, Let's, let's remember, if you do a long press, it'll highlight or select an item. And then you may do short presses. I'm going to drag the screen down a little bit. Then just a short press on the next one, uh, or however many success, successive ones you want to touch, just a quick press will also select those. But now those two are selected, getting started, and the Umatilla National Forest uh, map. I just don't want that Umatilla National Forest map in there because it clutters up my regular... I, I can't explain the difference or why they've done it, but they've made a couple of different kinds of MBUMs for the Pomeroy Ranger District. I'll, I'll use the ones that Pomeroy Ranger District actually made. But in any case, I'm going to push the Move command, which is the folder with the arrow on the top right. And I'm going to move those that I had selected to temp. So I'm going to tap on temp. And now if you look at the temp folder in the list here, those two items are in it now. So actually, I want to put that Washington Highway map in it too. Nah, we'll leave the Washington Highway map out. But I do want to move these three different uh, MVUMs that are all for the Umatilla National Forest, Pomeroy Ranger District. I want to move those into the Umatilla collection. So I will long press on the top one and then just quick presses on the next two. The move symbol again was the top right, the folder with the arrow. I want to move it into Umatilla. Okay, so now you can see the organization is going to be a lot easier to take care of here. Uh, you want to make sure that you decide on an organization fairly early on to keep these things from getting cluttered. I ride in, well, I've ridden in probably 15 different national forests. Uh, and yeah, it, it got real cluttered. And I had to do a lot of work to get it back into shape. We'll look at my real tablet here in a little while. But anyway, this is the way I want it. Let's stop uh, this one and go on to another chapter. I may get into a little bit of trouble with the Venza for showing you this way. Uh, because... I know us ATV, UTV riders, we want to get out there uh, on the trail as soon as we can. We're generally trying to scurry to uh, make sure that 
that were all set up and ready to go when the, the ride leader is ready to go. So I'm always in a last minute rush. Uh, get all the electronics on, get the camera on, get the GPS going, get Google Maps up, get Avenza Maps up, get my digital dash up. Where's my radios? What channel is everybody on? Uh, yeah, we're, we're messing around with all that kind of stuff, and all of a sudden the ride leader takes off. You're not going to have time to make your layers first. That's the more professional way to do it is to figure out where you're going, what you're doing, blah, 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 make a layer, assign the layer to the maps or the collections you're going to be in, uh, and then that layer will show up. You make, you make the layer active, and that layer will show up in the maps that you associated it with. That's all good and fine if, you know, if you're a research guy and you can sit in your car until... Uh, until you have everything set up right or you set it up the night before at home. And, and that's a good idea. If you know where you're going to be going, set it up the night before. But most of us are procrastinators. we got other things to do. We just want to hit the trail. So uh, what, what you are going to do is to open up your map. Uh, and, I, and I want to show you right here that there's a number of ways to sort these maps. You can sort them by recently viewed, distance, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the, the distance one is a recent ad, and I'm so grateful that they added that. So the, the nearest MVUM to me as the crow flies is, is 7.4 miles away. Let's open that. And the, the map pops open. Okay, so these are the three maps that I've got. You, you uh, learned the last time around about this, this square on the top right with or top left with the orange in it, how that represents, you know, that's one map there. And that's another map there. And that's another map down there. Uh, and they overlap each other, but that's just the way the feds do their maps. So, right now there, there are no, uh, no features on any of these maps, but I just wanted to demonstrate that. Let's go back to layers for just a second. I just pushed the back button on the top left. Look at layers. There are no layers. Okay, I'm going to go back to my maps and open that, that closest map again. And the way that I go in to this area to ride is, uh, I moved. So I go in through this, this area right here. That's, that's the county road I come in on. Let's drop a pin there. Now the, the first pin you drop is going to force it to, to create a layer. The, the pin is the on the bottom left, that pin, and it's default a red pin right now. Uh, we've used it before. You can pick a number of colors. You remember all this from the last, but it's I'm going to harp a whole bunch. It's important to label things while you can. If, if you wait till you get home or a month from now, you'll never remember... Uh, what the pin represented. So, enter a title. That's uh, that's a Soton side entrance. Uh, a S O T I N side. T R A C E. And uh, that's not Ashton. A S O. Watch out for spell check. It'll get you. In fact, it's a Soton Creek. There we go. So that's good enough for me for now. We've added that place mark. So now if the theory is right, it should have created a layer to hold that place mark. So I'm going to go back with the top left button. And normally you just go along all day now and you'd turn record tracks on, you'd drop your your pins, you'd take your photographs, you'd do all those kind of things, add all the features you want. Then, then at the end of the day, so long as you didn't go out of this collection, everything you did 
We're going to click on layers now. Now there's something there called layer and it's linked to the Umatilla map collection. But you'll notice that it is just a layer. It's not, it, it doesn't tell you anything. So uh, we want to go in and name that right away. I'm going to long press it until it's selected. Yeah. Come on. Long, whoops. Long press until it's selected. And then the pencil or pen symbol on the top right. And what kind of a name would we give this? Uh, if you intend to set, to save all of your rides all of your pins you know your tracks and everything into one layer and that's what I'll do I'll I'll create a layer called uh, Umatilla let's see the X will clear that all out U M A T I L L A I think that was Umatilla U M A T I L L A so and then we'll hit and done. So now we've now we have a, a folder named Umatilla, and everything that we do now in that collection of Umatilla maps is going to be saved there. So that that is the really basic, uh, the really basic lowdown on on layers. But we're going to do some more work in here to exercise them. Okay, let's show you the uh, the more professional way, the way Avenza recommends uh, setting an active layer, uh, so that you know the the night before perhaps you can get yourself set up uh, where if you start this active layer or create a, an active layer, uh, everything will go right directly into the layer. Uh, when when you open the map and start recording anything. So in any case, uh, we've got the map open, the pin with the three lines behind it, and there's uh, a layer, but that's the whole forest that I ride in. I want to make a new layer uh, over here, so we'll hit the plus sign. And just for the sake of... Uh, uh, speed here we'll call it new whoops yep new layer there's new layer now we want to make that new layer the default layer so we'll long press on it hit the pencil the edit and on the uh, third line down here uh, set to current layer there we go so the next time you open the tablet in fact, we'll check on that. Okay, so now we do see that the uh, current layer is turned on and it says all active features are added to the current layer. But let's get all the way out of the app and then back into it just to make sure uh, that we're going to go close all out. Just, just to make sure that when you come back the next day and you restart everything, in fact, I did a a, uh, yeah, there's no recently used apps. So let's go home and then start a Venza Maps again. And let's go into the Umatilla and to any one of those maps in that collection. And the map opened. So now the, uh, the pin with the three bars is called map features that shows you all the map features map features of course are in in these layers and there's the umatilla and the new layer is listed as active 
I'll be darned. So that's the way they suggest uh, you go, you create your new layer, uh, and then all of your pins, all of your tracks, anything you want to do is now going to be in that active layer so long as you're in, on one of the maps that's in that collection. So uh, I actually learned something new myself. That's going to be useful. If I have time, I will do this the night before or, uh, you know, it, it's going to save me from letting it put all of the new stuff in the, in the root part of the, uh, the layers and then having to copy and move everything. So maybe I'll do it like that from now on myself. But that's the suggested way to use Avenza and to create, to create a layer and make it active. And you're supposed to actually be able to make any of these active. Let's, let's click on Misery Spring, hold it down, the pencil, and then, yeah, you see it says set to current layer there. Now if you want to place all of your pins and, and tracks and whatnot in that layer, just turn it on. All features are added to the current layer. So that's a really good feature to know about. It's something new to me. I learn all the time. So anyway, there you go. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, here's the next scenario. Uh, a buddy of mine just emailed me. Uh, he said, I got this great track for you. I'd like you to go up there and, and this is where I went. I'd like you to be able to follow my track. So I sent you a track, but I also sent you a bunch of pins that, that, uh, you know, it's, it's a route that I've never been on, but I pinned out. Maybe you could go down there and tell me, you know, what it looks like. So it's like, okay, let's do that. So first let's go to our, our mail. And yeah, let's see who wrote. Who wrote me? Oh, Dan Plute wrote me. Tracks and pins for the old buzzard. So over here on the right, there's a down arrow. I'm going to download those tracks and pins. And I can see the arrows up on top uh, indicating that something's downloaded. I just pulled down the list. And there's my download manager, tracks and pins for the old buzzard. Uh, so I, I know they're there now. And we'll go and open Avenza Maps. And you could do this while Avenza is open. It doesn't matter. But we're going to go to the Layers tab or Layers whatever. And the three bars on the bottom right. In fact, I'm going to perform an experiment. I'm going to open the Umatilla, uh, Utim Umatilla layer. And let's see if when I get these layers from my buddy, if it autom automatically puts them there or if it puts them in the root. So three of them. We're going to import layers. That was the bottom one. Let's do that again. Import layers. There we go. So down below here, well, the import, the first thing we're going to do is link to maps. And we're going to link these, these layers that I'm going to get to the Umatilla, to the Umatilla collection. Now this check mark on the top right is really important. I missed that a whole bunch of times when I first started goofing around with it. I just check my Umatilla box and hit the hit the back button. That doesn't work. You have to hit the check mark on the top right. And now we're going to get it we're going to get that from storage locations. We linked it to the map. Now we're going to go from storage locations. There's a number of ways to get uh, the KML files or, or the layers, but, uh, but this is the way I'm showing you today. So you can see uh, it's set to recent, and tracks and pins for old buzzard comes up on top. Uh, th this is where your organization is important, too, as you start getting these things from your buddies. 
you should probably make a folder in your, your download files that says KMLs or some such thing. Uh, that way you can keep track of, you know, you might have a hundred different downloads in it and only 20 KMLs. Might as well put them all in a folder. I have not done that here, but I have for my my real tablet. So I'm going to pick tracks and pins for the old buzzard. And it says file downloaded. And I see it did not put it into the Umatilla folder. I was hoping it would since it was uh, was open, but let's go go back up to the, to the top. And doggone it, there they are right there. Uh, it's two layers that, that I had, or <laughs> my buddy Dan, it's two layers that my buddy Dan had sent. One will be uh, that, that track that he was talking about, the other the pins. But this is okay, it's easy as long as you stay on top of it and don't let it get away from you. We'll just move that into the Umatilla uh, collection. Uh, again, if you let a hundred of these pop up, you'll or you know accumulate. You'll never stay on top of it. So I will long press on the Pomeroy Umatilla. That's what the guy sent me, and I will click on the move button, the folder with the arrow in it, and we're going to move those down to the Umatilla. But it already tells me they're linked to different maps. And this is where we, we can have some problems. So now, well, it's not a problem. You just got to be smarter than, than something or another. Uh, so we got to figure out what's the difference between what these are linked to. Uh, since it's a Umatilla that, that I'm going to put it in, we'll long press. Come on. Long press. And then we're going to hit the edit. And then, see, it is only linked down here. I'm looking under linked maps. It's, did I spell Umatilla right? Maybe that's the problem. U-M-A-T-I-L-L-A. -L -L so then we will go back. The ones that were sent to me, U-M-A-T-I-L-L-A. -L -L -A. So they're both linked to the same map, so I'm not sure what the heck's going on. Let's hit link to maps. Hmm. Everything looks correct, so we may have to figure this out and then come back to you again. Okay, so here we are. Uh, I think we've got it all figured out now. Uh, we just imported from a, a buddy's email a KML file that he sent me, and it was the Pomeroy Umatilla layer that we just imported. And we look at it and we can see that it's linked to Umatilla. We look at ours and it's linked to Umatilla, and we assume that it's fine. But it's not. Uh, that Pomeroy Umatilla layer that has two layers under it is actually linked to his Umatilla collection of maps. Not my Umatilla collection of maps, and the database knows it. So I believe that's the, the, uh, the point of confusion uh, within the app. And I probably was trying to move that Pomeroy Umatilla layer into the Umatilla layer, and that's not what I would really want to do. What we're going to do, we're going to open the Pomeroy Umatilla layer that we just imported. We're going to open it by clicking on it, and we see that 
the guy sent me two different uh, layers again. But now I want to take and I want to import those layers, although they are linked, still linked to Umatilla, his Umatilla. So let's go back and do this. Let's go back to Map Layers. We'll long press on the one that we imported. We will press on the, the pencil to do the edit. We'll go down here to where it says linked maps, and it says link to Umatilla, but let's unlink from all maps. So we're pressing on unlink from all maps. Yes, we want to unlink it. So now we're going to link it to our maps. Link to maps, and we're going to link to our Umatilla. Of course, that's all that's here is our maps. We don't have his maps here. So we'll click on Umatilla collection there and then the check mark and then we'll go back the top left back button uh, and I am checking the bottom left it says link to Umatilla we'll go back okay so now let's take the two layers the guy sent me we'll open up his the, what he sent to me and we're going to import these now so long press not import them, we're going to move them. A long press on one, a short press on the other, and then the move button, the little folder with the arrow, and we're going to move it into Umatilla, just plain Umatilla, that's what I made. And do you wish to apply the destinations, layers, default styles? I fell for that a few times and said yes, if you're importing something really big with lots of pins, lots of colors, lots of different attributes, it will change them all to the default attribute of the layer you're moving them into, and you'll lose all your color differentiation. So for me now, it's almost an automatic no. I don't want to maintain the colors and whatnot that the other people sent me or that I've created myself. Okay, so now we have nothing in the uh, Pomeroy Dash Umatilla layer that he sent me. So I go back up, and you can see now there is nothing listed under the top one, the Pomeroy Umatilla. Uh, so it's empty. You know, the next one down, the one that says Umatilla, says one place mark and two layers. So what we're going to do now, we're going to press, a uh, long press on the import, the one that I, you know, the imported KML, long press, and let's just delete it, the garbage can. Yes, we want to get rid of it. Okay, so now we have uh, one place mark and two layers under Umatilla. And you'll notice that they're all highlighted, so everything's good to go here. We're, we're okay. Let's have a look at our map now. The reason I mentioned the highlighting is you can tell if they're going to be visible on the map or not uh, as long as they are uh, full color highlighted. Uh, I don't know what m maybe the words are because they have focus. Uh, I'm not sure what the technical term is, but let's demonstrate the visibility thing. So if we long press to select, takes two taps to do that. You see the eyeball, the, the third icon over? Press on that eyeball, and you see how the, uh, the top one dimmed that I had selected? It will not be visible on the Umatilla collection anymore. All you will see now is the Misery Springs to Troy uh, place marks and the uh, Soton Creek entrance place mark. Let's turn the visibility back on. So we selected it, we'll go to the eyeball. Uh, did it turn on? Let's see, let's un unselect here. Nope, I, what the heck? Come on. Sometimes I get flustered, a long press to select, tap on the eyeball. There we go. Now uh, now we're all visible, 
and we will go to my maps and we'll go to Umatilla and the one that's close to us there we go there's my track all the way from my house up and around Ed's, Ed's loop uh, that's the one pin we dropped that, that we labeled the Soton Creek entrance uh, very good now the pins that we dropped are down the map below this we'll keep pulling up so that's a route to get down in Troy. you get out of the National Forest down there it's actually in Oregon so I don't go down there much you get caught on any kind of a road in Oregon and it's trouble uh, anyway so there you go uh, did, did anybody name any of this let's click on track one nope nobody named that track I believe that's the same track that, that you'd find over here. Yep, track one. So, you know, that's really the, I call it Ed's Loop. It's really the Stevens, Stevens Ridge Loop, but I could name it right here. Stevens Ridge. Let's see, the X will, will tap everything out. Uh, I'll still call it Ed's Loop just for the, the heck of it. Ed's Loop, very good done so back to just go back and the maps will pop up now when I click on that that's Ed's loop it's a 74 mile uh, run for me it uh, even tells me how much time I've taken to do it that day we we took eight hours because we had lunch and screwed around and all that you can go into this and get more detail there's there's a graph of all of our speeds and elevations and whatnot so, anyway, uh, that is how tracks work, and you can imagine, now, if we had a hundred different tracks on this, uh, and you only wanted to see Ed's, now you understand why putting them in different layers is important, because you can turn the visibility off for a layer, but you can't turn visibility off for, uh, I'm sorry, you can't turn visibility off for uh, objects or features. Well, you can too. I uh, fib. So you, you could turn the visibility off here. But if you, for instance, had a, a hundred pins, this is a feature we're, we're looking at editing. If you had a hundred pins here, you wouldn't want to turn a hundred pins vi visibility off off one at a time it would be better to turn them off all at once and you can do that with layers so yeah almost made a mistake you can operate visibility for individual objects or as they call them features or you can do it by layer so uh, in any case that gives you the an idea of some of the power that Avenza layers has I may do one little final chapter here just to kind of show you what what my general organization is on my real tablet, uh, but we'll see how that goes. This is getting really long. So, uh, yep, off to the next chapter. Let's just have a quick look at the way I keep my real laptop set up. Uh, you might spy on some of my icons here to see what I enjoy having on. Uh, this laptop is specifically for, uh, for my outdoor activities. We'll start a Venza and we'll go right into layers. That's what this is about. You can see none of them are visible right now. Oh, the Pomeroy Umatilla is. It's visible. It's not dimmed out. Uh, but, you know, as an example of the way I keep things organized, uh, if you look at this top one, the Clearwater, uh, Grizzly Camp 60, Elk River, uh, I've got a number of, you know, three different layers under it. Uh, and those layers can have multiple tracks or lines or objects in them. But, so the Clearwater is a forest, Camp Grizzly and Elk River are a couple of locations within the Clearwater National Forest. Gee, I have one, I have two of them that are just named Layer. Uh, chances are it's just because I was goofing around with them while I was making this. 
but if you do go out and you ride and you record tracks without making a layer and making it active, it's going to put it in the root, just like uh, what the two layers are here. Uh, basically, I have no way of knowing what they are, uh, except let's look at this one, the one that says uh, linked to the Washington Recreation Map. See, by looking at it, or even looking inside, I really don't know where the heck that is. I mean, I could probably get uh, lat longs or something out of here somewhere and figure it out. But the easier way, let's, uh, let's make that layer uh, visible. You remember, you do that with the eyeball. And it's linked to the Washington Recreation Map. So let's push on Maps and look on the Washington Recreation Map. Where is, oh, it's, of course, it's the second one down right there. No compass, yeah, I remember that. Uh, so all it was was a dot or something that I laid right on, on my home. It's It was just a test. There's nothing, uh, really nothing there. So I can delete those two things called layer. But again, I just wanted you to see an example of uh, my uh, my organization, the Pomeroy Umatilla uh, Forest, it's, it's really the Umatilla Forest and it's the, the Pomeroy Ranger District. Uh, boy, I do have a lot of different things that I've saved up there. Uh, but that's the way we do it. So, uh, you know, as a, an example, this one here uh, has a whole bunch of, and, and gee, I've done a fairly good name of of uh, naming things, but uh, yeah, it has a bunch of lines or tracks or whatever they are in a blues loop one. That must be a, a track, uh, but that's how my actual laptop looks. And I do keep uh, a number of other KML files stored, in fact. Why don't we just go look at that? I don't think I'm giving away any secrets. Uh, file manager. Don't have my glasses on. I hope I can see that. It's in utilities, my files. Uh, if I go to downloads, are they in there? Uh, don't know what all this stuff is. Where, where are? Let's try downloads again. Yeah, we don't want to look at these. I guess. You know, Google Drive. I do have a, a whole bunch of. KMLs right there. So you can see I do have a ton of KML stored on Google Drive. Uh, and that gives me a way. Not, not only do I keep the KMLs. I'm sorry I'm not speaking in complete sentences. Trying to get this done in one cut. But if I look at maps. Uh, I do have a ton of maps saved there too. So you keep things organized and they're easy to find. Uh, if you put too much on the tablets at one time, it slows things down, gums them up. So uh, anyway, that's the quick tour of my tablet. That's going to be all of this video. I'm amazed if anybody sits through it in one shot. I hope you just took it chapter by chapter. Thanks for watching and uh, subscribe to the channel if you like. See ya. Bye-bye. Thank you.